stripe. How's about this? The famous River Kennet. A river I've always wanted to fish, dreamt of fishing, but thought, you know, you've got to be a member of a really expensive syndicate or something like that to fish it. Not here. This is a day ticket water. Probably second only to a place like the Test. Absolutely fantastic. I really can't wait to get started here. I've had a quick walk around uh, to work out what tackle I'm going to use. And I've seen a few browns. It's a stocked fishery. So there are some better than average river sized fish in here. Start off with, the river itself is not terribly wide, as you see. Maybe 25 foot here, 15 foot in other places. Little glides, there are ripples, there are groins with fish holding areas behind them. There's a weir pool just over here, which I'm going to try in a moment. So I've set up something sort of medium, as it were. Going for a lightweight outfit today. This is an 8 foot 3 rod for a 5 6. But I'm using a 5 weight floating line with it. Got my nice light loop reel. This will handle light tippets if I need to. But I'm being a bit careful today. I've got a seven and a half foot leader which goes down, it's a tapered leader, and it goes down to a six pounds at the point. And on that point, I've got a gold head, gold ribbed hairs here. Because I might have to give some little tiny flicks to where the trout are, keeping a low profile. It's going to be a good day. It's something I'm really looking forward to, so I'm going to get on with it. Just searching around. This is a little grayling. I'm going to have to just swing her in. Oh, yes, here we go. There she is. Oh, the beauty. And this one's going to have to go straight back. There we go. I'm going to have to. Sorry, Jake, I've got to go that far. Oh, that's all right. It's gone away. <laughs> so, two species. Still not the species I'm actually after, but it bodes well. The nymphs are doing the trick. Although uh, the mayfly have stopped coming off. That was uh, some weeks ago. I've got a sneaking feeling that uh, if I try a large dry or maybe even a mayfly later on in the day when it's warmed up a little bit, hopefully the trout will st still have in their memory what a mayfly looks like and tastes like. and may still come up for that as well. Let's carry on exploring. Lovely weir here. So again, I'm just going to search through it. Can't see anything because of the turbulence and the angle of the light. But a nymph cast up there it may well be something hiding in that well oxygenated flow. Don't know why I'm doing this. I could fish the other side. I just can't wait to get in this pool and give it a go. Let's get up above and have a look. Oh no, I missed that. I think that was. Such a swift little take, that was probably a grayling. But we'll see. See if I get another one. Right into the flow there. Keep up with that line, right down the middle of the flow. The nymph's coming off, a little inducement. No. There we go. Keep up with it. Another little upstream roll. That's it. Try and search in that far edge. That's where I thought I had to take just now. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? I've got so many options. The river here is being turned into a fishery. You've got uh, a main part of river, a tributary, a weir, a pool, a glide. You just sport for choice where to fish. A few hundred yards back, there was a fork. And I stood there thinking, well, I've not been here before. Which one do I take? Then I spotted this weir, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to give this one a little go. 
This day is going to be very different and very interesting. There's just so much to try. I'm going to keep on trying. Another sleeping fish. Good size. Oh well. I think that's a pike. <laughs> yeah, it's a pike. You can see the dorsal, the tail fin dropping back, which is why he's not interested in this nymph. Just as well, it would have cost me a bit of a leader. Even though there's nothing rising, I quite fancy trying to dry fly. I can't see the bottom clearly at the moment because there's a lot of cloud cover, so it's getting very difficult to spot fish. So casting a nymph is sort of blind. I may as well fish blind with a dry. At least then, if I do see something that's moving, I'll be able to cover it. So off with the nymph and see if I can seek inspiration in my dry fly box. Okay. Pop the nymph back. Grey wolf. That could be a very nice fly to use today. Might be a tad on the large side. But as I say, the mayfly season's over. But these trout, they were feeding on mayfly. So why shouldn't they say, ah, there's another one. They don't know that, as is called Duffer's Fortnight, is over. So let's see if we can give that a try. I'll try a larger one. I can always scale down after. They might want a nice, big, tasty morsel. Classic fly, this grey wolf. Float very high, very visible. And I will have the option with this, because it's such a generously proportioned fly, maybe try a little bit of uh, New Zealand style. I could even put a small nymph underneath it later. Covered my bases. Okay, so there it is, the fly is on. Nip off that tag end. And now to anoint it with a little bit of floatant. Good, now I'll search up there a little bit more. There's no guarantee this will work, but it's always worth a try. I'd say I've got all day. And whilst there's nothing actually showing, doesn't mean there's nothing there. So I can just explore a few casts here, a few casts there. Always looking out for something that might be rising. That's gliding down there beautifully. Now that I'm armed with this uh, alternative, new weapon, I should carry on wandering around, see what I can spot. Oh, 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 yes! Oh no! My first take from the brown, it came up just as I was lifting off. So of course, the fly was going away from it and I'm pulling it away when I strike. Oh, damn. I, I was gonna say, what a lovely looking pool. There's gotta be a fish in here. Oh well, there might be another one. That would be a perfect check nymphing pool. I saw a nice fish up there and he dropped down below the bridge. He could be hanging under it or he could have dropped down into this deeper glide down here and then worked my way back up towards the bridge, searching out the hole. This is getting very trying. It's about my 11th pattern I've put on now. They turn and look at it, but they just turn away. Get that presentation right. There, reach cast. Yes, yes, I'm in. These fish.
fish have been taking the mickey out of me all day. Finally, I looked in the book, it said last night there was a good hatch of sedge. So, after trying so many types of nymphs, I've put on an amber sedge pupa. First run through, and he's mine! My first hen it. Oh. Oh, what a beautiful brown trout. Look at this, my first Kennet trout. A lovely brown. Oh, and he really wanted that. Just in the mouth there, look. And fight. Ow! He's biting him back. I must get that out. After all that time, they, we thought, or I thought rather, <laughs> this one wants to be an eel. I thought they weren't actually feeding. But this one was flicking around a little bit. Most of the others have been sat very, very still. But there we are. Absolutely beautiful. My first fish. I think I should be trying this nymph on others. It's, we can take the fish if we wish, but this one is so lively, it's going back. And it's gone already. Back to the pool. I wish I had a cigar with me. I'd light it up now, even though it's raining. Oh, marvellous. Just for your information, there it is. A little imitation of a sedge hatching. Obviously early in the day, but they've seen it before. And that was his downfall. Brilliant. Find another pool, find another trout. Oh no! I've just hooked a little grayling. At least I think it's a grayling on a size 20 Adams and on the way in a pike has grabbed hold of it and swallowed it and it's only three pound line it's only a small pike but I can't see me getting this out I'm going to have to try and walk him down to the bridge what are you playing a fish and along comes a pike caught pike on the fly before but never like this ah there he goes if I give him any more room he'll turn that what's left of that fish That'll be the end of my leader. Come on, get out. Either that or I can't get in. I can see him right down here on the margin. I don't think I can get down this bank to him. But I'm going to have a go. He's wedged himself in the reeds here. <laughs> what you right into that then? <laughs> Whoa, and that's it, he's bitten through the line. And he spat the fish out. There we are. Come on, open up. Look at those teeth. And that's gone through. That's what's gone through my line, and it was a dace. So, two species in one cast on the Kennet. And with a bit of luck, I'll get my fly back, although the dace has had it. The pike better go back because they do pike fish these waters in the winter. Oh, he's, he's facing the wrong way in the weed. I'll just get him out. There he goes. He's gone. Now that's a double experience. <laughs> okay, not what I was expecting, but that means I've had roach, trout, grayling, pike, and dace. Five species in one day. Oh, let's get some more of the trout species though. Let's see if I can get my fly back. I'm 
changed over. I thought I'd try something different. I'll try fishing New Zealand style with a, a grey wolf on the top. And I just dropped a little pheasant tail behind it. A little size 16. Not brought many trout yet, but it has got me another grayling. And I think that's gone in the net. And there we are. Yep. Spat out the hook in the net. Oh, come on. Don't want to hold it too hard because I'm putting it back. Come on. There we go. Steady. There. Well, that was interesting. So the uh, New Zealand method works on the Kennet. I can stick with that for a while. Carry on trying different areas. Do this before I lose my fly, or he loses total interest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Another one that had a little turn, and it becomes. Oh, yes, I'm in. Marvelous. I've changed to a dry fly. Put on a little tups because I've seen a few fish moving, and this one has blessed me. Although heaven only knows how I'm going to land it. I might have to walk it downstream about 20 yards where there is a gap if he wants to play the game. That's a fit fish. Look at it go. Whoa! Under the rod tip. There's a little gap a bit farther down. Oh, he's been very obliging now. You just keep coming down. No, only a little bit farther. Come on, play with me. Here we go. Now I can get down to him. Oh, that noise is air coming out my waders, by the way. There we go. Tire him a little bit more, I think. Wow. The colour on this fish. Superb. So buttery yellow. Little size 20 tops. And he's there. He's there. He's mine. Oh, you almost fall in with joy. <sighs> Number two. Hard work today. It's got a little bit duller. And now they are looking. F oh, look at the colour on the flanks. Beautiful buttery yellow. Spots, dark spots on the back. Red spots down here. Perfect tail. What an excellent fish. Did he want it as bad as the other? Oh, only just inside there. Will I take this one or not? What to do? Well, if I can get the hook out, I'll see if he wants to go. I think the trouble is what I'm going to have here. Uh, come on. We've never released this in the water because of the... There we go. Got it. And he's still lively. One last look. Let's see how it goes back. Give it a few seconds. Get it out the right way. I'm grateful to that fish, and I hope you'll be grateful to me for putting him back. What a beauty. That's a, that's a Kennet, Kennet Brang. 
And that's what we come for. These famous chalk streams with their perfect condition fish. They can see everything. You know, that was a little tiny dry, little tups indispensable. Came up, nailed it. Oh, I'm quite out of breath. Oh, now I've got to get out of here. What we do for our sport, eh? So, five different species, two browns. There's a four fish limit here. Uh, it's catch and release though, if you wish. So, I've got a bit more time. I'm gonna dry my fly off and have another go. Come on, my babies. They're starting. Well, I'm beginning to lose the light now. Starting, everything's starting to fade. A few little sedges coming off, odd fish rising. But what a day I've had, eh? The Kennet. It's a part of our history. It's part of world history as far as fly fishing is concerned. The Kennet, one of the original chalk streams. And to be able to get this on a day ticket water for me has been absolutely fantastic. I never thought I'd get this opportunity. I didn't know day tickets were available. You know they're available now, and if you want to find out about it, go to www.riverkennet.co.uk and you can book yourself a day on this fantastic beats at Barton Farm. Now, this is only one tiny stretch of the river. There must be about four or five miles where it all interlaces, and I haven't been able to cover it all. I've covered a lot of fish, and I've caught five different species, as you saw, including that pike. I've caught on nymphs and on dries. Now, admittedly, in the morning it was very, very hard. You could see the fish lying, but they weren't feeding. They were just led there. They weren't making the telltale little flicks that say, where's the food? I'm up for it. I'm going for it. So I just kept persevering and persevering. I'm going to hang on now for the evening rise. Just for another hour or so, I'm going to work my way back to the car and say thank you to this little piece of history that I've thoroughly enjoyed being part of today.